Hey there. Uh, I made a video not too long ago, maybe two videos ago, where I basically walked through how you actually set up self-hosting Convex. Um, and so essentially Convex is a managed uh, backend as a service. If you're familiar with like Superbase or Firebase, same kind of idea, but in my opinion, uh, that much better. Um, and to in order to get this running um, or to actually set this up for self-hosting is pretty straightforward, particularly to get it running locally on your machine, but it, it's the same process if you wanted to get it running uh, on a remote server. You just have to change some environment URLs and configure um, your web server properly so you can expose it publicly. But I just want to recap that really quick. Um, but, but before we do that, uh, the purpose of this video is to show you how you can use the self-hosted um, instance of Convex and connect it to a remote database, right? So out of the box, Convex uses SQLite uh, by default, which is just on disk. But if you had a remote instance of Postgres that you wanted to connect to your Convex, your self-hosted Convex instance, that's possible because um, Convex supports using Postgres as that backing store uh, for your instance. I think they also have support now for MySQL. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure I saw in their Discord that they added that. Uh, but we're going to focus on the Postgres support here. So let's go ahead and just show you how to get the instance of Convex running again. So let's go ahead and clear this out. And we'll say Docker Compose Pull. Um, and this should pull my images. And again, I'm just using the Docker Compose file that they uh, point to in that blog post. right? So you can run this command to actually pull Docker Compose down locally to your machine, or the Docker Compose file to your machine. And now what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll say docker compose up. And what this is going to do is it's going to create some containers and it's going to give me a running uh, convex backend. And it's also going to give me a running version of the convex dashboard that I can log into. Before I can log into the convex dashboard, though, I have to generate a key. And the command to do this looks like that. that looks like this docker compose exe. Uh, EXEC backend, and then this particular magical script that gives us an admin key. So let's go ahead and run that. And again, all this is just coming from that blog post, which I'll link to in my description. That's where all the commands are referenced. Um, their docs are really great about this too. Okay, so now that we have this key, we can copy it. And remember, this key is secret, so you wouldn't want to share this with anybody if this is expo if your dashboard is exposed publicly. Um, you know that you should treat this like a password but for my purposes here uh, i'm not going to worry about that so let's go ahead and go over to our dashboard now and when we hit it, it should ask us for an admin key we can paste our admin key in there and log in and we should see some data because when i originally set this up i'm just using sqlite and we imported some data in here so that's where the data is coming from it's just our little sqlite database uh, that convex uses by default uh, as its backing store so what do we want to, so what do we have to do in order to now get our instance of convex talking to a remote DB? Um, and it's actually pretty straightforward. They cover it really well in their docs here. Um, all you have to do is set an environment variable and it's very well named. It's just the database URL. Um, and in this case for Postgres, it's going to be the connection string that you use to connect to your instance of Postgres. Uh, they do point out that you have to have the uh, URL exactly like they show it here. You can't have anything after the domain, right? So it just needs to be the domain um, in your connection string. And then you also need to have a database in your Postgres instance that's called convex self-hosted. If you don't have that there, it's not going to work. So let's go ahead and try to get this set up and working using the service they reference here, which is neon.tech. So we'll go ahead and go over to the neon console and we will create a new project. And again, I'm not gonna worry too much about secrets because I'm gonna blow all this away. So we're gonna call this convex self hosted. And then here where it asks me for my database name, I'm just gonna make the default database for my instance here called convex self hosted. And again, we just wanna make sure that that matches exactly what they have here. So let's just, for, for the sake of confidence, let's just copy and paste. Um, and then we can use Azure, that's fine. Uh, they do talk a little bit about, uh, in the docs, they do talk a little bit about how the geographic location of your remote DB to your convex backend could impact the speed 
of your convex instance, the, the, the more, uh, the closer they are, obviously the better the performance. So something to think about if you're going this route. So let's go ahead and create. And now we'll get our a connection string here. And again, shouldn't share this with anybody on the internet, but because this is a video and I'm just gonna blow this project away, I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, the one thing I wanna point out here is that by default, you'll see Neon gives a, adds, a adds, some, adds some information to the domain, right? So it actually specifies the database you're gonna connect to, and then it also specifies some query params here. But for this to work with Convex, we need to not include that. So we're just gonna copy the connection string up to um, and only including the domain part. So let's go ahead and do that. Copy this. Now we need to navigate back to our terminal and we actually need to shut down our um, containers because we need to change an environment variable in that Docker compose file. So let's go ahead and shut that down. Take a sip of coffee, coffee while I wait. Okay, looks like that stopped. Just waiting for Docker to exit. There we go. Now let's come up here and let's do in them Docker compose. And hopefully it's not too crunched on the screen here. You guys will still be able to make it out what's happening. There we go. So what we need to do is we need to edit an environment variable for our backend, for our backend service. So let's just go right here where it has the, it actually has that, that environment for us um, or environment variable already spec'd out. Uh, but the default is just nothing um, at the moment. So let's go ahead and change this to be our connection string. So let's get out of uh, selection mode. Let's get into edit mode and we'll just paste in our Postgres connection string. And again, wanna make sure it's following that exact uh, instructions they specified. Only the domain, only your username, only your password uh, should make up that connection string. So with that there, we should be good here. So let's go ahead and write that out. Oops, let's go ahead and write that out. And then we can exit. And now what I'm hoping is the next time I start up these containers, I'm hoping I see some information about some tables being created. And then hopefully over here in my database, I should be able to see some tables. So let's go ahead and navigate to the tables here. So you can see right now there's nothing here so let's go ahead and start up our container. So we'll say docker compose up. And it looks like it's in, you can see it's actually printing out some logs. It says initializing database with system tables. So there must be some kind of default tables Convex needs to create in order to get things running. Let's see if it actually created some tables. And you can see it looks like it created a bunch of tables here to support um, all that functionality uh, that Convex gives us out of the box. We have table for cron jobs, uh, for cron job logs, for handling functions, it looks like. All of this, Convex's code is all open source. So if you really wanted to know exactly what Convex is doing behind the scenes to make this all work, you could go uh, look at their, 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 um, their code base. I, I don't read Rust very well, so I would have a hard time explaining any of it. But if we navigate back over to Neon, we should see now, if we give it a refresh, some tables here, right? There we go. So here are our tables. And again, I don't know what all this, I don't know what these tables facilitate and I don't know what the data that's stored in here facilitate, but the whole point of these databases is to support that, uh, that managed instance of Convex, or not managed, the unmanaged instance of Convex we have running locally. So we should be able to now refresh our dashboard and probably re-log into it since we restarted the container. Oh, we're already logged in. And you can see now I don't have any tables, right? Because now I'm talking to my remote database and not that SQLite database. So to populate this or to actually show that this is working, let's actually now try to import some data in here. So let's go to another project I have already set up called Convex Local Deployments. And let's 
let's go ahead and make sure that my environment is set up correctly. So we'll say in invim env dot local. Make sure the environment variables here are set correctly. Um, so we need to update this key. So let's make sure this key is updated. That way our client application can talk to our backend. So let's paste this. There we go. We'll write that out. Okay, now let's go ahead and try to load some sample data. So we'll say, we will say MPX, um, what is it, MPX, con or is it NPM, I think it's NPM convex import, and then what we want to import, which is sample data. And I think we have to specify the name of the table. So table is going to be tasks, um, or is it MPX? Let's see, maybe it's MPX. There we go, it's parsing. Looks like it created three tasks. Awesome, so now let's go see. There we go, now we have our tasks. Um, and that's not gonna be reflected in the database because it's not the store, the, the data and the structure of your data you see in your convex dashboard um, is not gonna be a perfect one-to-one -one match with what you see in your um, hosted, or your, what should I say, your remote um, database, right? So this is kind of like the underlying data structures that Convex uses to perform all the magic that it gives us. So it's not a one-to-one, -one, but now you essentially have your data stored in a Postgres instance that's remote. It's not um, a SQLite database. And we can do all this, the normal things that we would expect to be able to do um, with our Convex instance. We're just using a remote database now. And we can also, let's see, let's add our function so we don't have any function. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say MPX Convex dev. And this should parse my convex functions and then put those in my instance. And now I have my task.get. And then if I open another terminal real quick to actually make just make sure you can see end to end it working. Let's go ahead and change into local deployments. Let's say npm run. We'll say npm run dev. This is just my, it's just a view template application, but it's connected to display the data in my convex, my self-hosted version of convex. And you can see I have my tasks here. It's kind of hard to, I didn't display them very well, but if I go over here and I edit something, so if I say integrate convex um, with remote database like that, we go back to the view application, we can see that text text is updated. So it's working end to end, right? My client is able to talk to my self-hosted um, instance of Convex and Convex is able to talk to my remote database hosted on neon.tech. So that's, um, that's how you get your self-hosted instance of Convex set up to work with a remote database. And again, just to recap, all we did was we obviously set up our remote database. In this case, I set it up with neon.tech but all we really need then at that point, once we have that um, remote instance of Postgres set up, is we just need our connection URL, and we need to be able to obviously reach the instance of, um, of reach the instance of Postgres that's running. And then all we have to do is come into our Docker Compose file and make sure that we set that specific um, environment variable. So let's go ahead and just recap that real quick. CD self-hosted. And we'll say uh, in them Docker Compose. And so then again, this is the envir environment variable we're setting, database URL. And that's all we had to do to get it up. So not a ton of, not a ton of legwork there, not a big lift. And again, uh, Convex has this great blog post. They also have some great documentation that just walks you through it in detail. Um, and I'll, I'll link to that in the description. So I hope this was helpful. If you got something out of it, leave a comment. Um, if there's something else you'd like me to take a look at with uh that's related to convex let me know too um i'd love to make more convex or more <laughs> content around convex because i just think it's a that's a wonderful piece of technology so all right i'll see you guys in the next video or short or live stream until then i hope you guys are having a great day